Is is recording it now? Okay. But welcome back, everybody. This is Captain Jason Dozier with Fish NFL, and today we're going to do my first story time for all of YouTube, for all of you guys to watch. And I figure, what better place to start than at the beginning? And the person that was there with me at the beginning, and who's still there, is my good friend Kelly Brookins. And uh, I figured we would tell him that I just put him on the spot, by the way. I told him that we would uh, tell him the story of our first fishing tournament. And really, you know, our kind of our first experiences, you know, saltwater fishing together. We bass fished a lot, you know, in Lake Pasadena and, and everywhere in Zephyr Hills, but never really saltwater fished. And we kind of were learning together. So that's kind of what I want to just tell that story today, that first IFA tournament. Yeah, what's up, guys? Yeah, we kind of kind of went into it by accident just uh said hey you want to go fishing with me i think we went with uh was it mark braxton the first time i went on the old carolina skip with you i think so <laughs> and caught nothing i think uh somebody caught a little tiny 10 inch redfish by accident hmm. <laughs> and that's where it started now i think uh what i remember was i had we, were we fishing on the skiff still, or had I already purchased the stealth? No, we were still fishing on the Carolina skiff. And towing and, it to um, Oyster Creek every weekend? Yeah, every, just just about every single weekend. I'm I'm pretty sure, uh, yeah, because we took JJ and Kiyoki, uh Funas down there uh, quite a few times. And I think JJ fell off the front of the skiff coming through Oyster Creek. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I remember that. Did I push him? Yeah, you did. Oh. <laughs> and then begged that, him not to when he put him back on the boat. <laughs> that was a, uh, that was a, I'm glad I didn't kill my friend moment. And yeah. JJ, I know you're going to watch this. We're happy you're still with us uh, yeah. down there, down south of here. In oh, Stewart. Man. If looks could kill, you were <laughs> dead. <laughs> I, did. I felt like a dick that day. Hey, let you, me, uh, let oh. me lower my camera real quick so I am not looking like I'm making eye contact with my computer. Let me lower it. Mm -hmm. I can see the letters now. They look backwards to me. They look good here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I remember that. We did still have the skiff. I remember JJ sitting with his legs over the front, and for whatever reason, while the boat was in gear, I thought it would be a great idea to push him overboard. But that may have been a ski alley day or shrimp alley day that where we ran out of beers or something. So I don't yep. remember was the case or not but definitely some stupidity involved in that it luckily we were in and out of that creek so many times we could it, all we had to do is hit the right sandbar and say yep this is oyster creek <laughs> <laughs> puts our way in at that point <laughs> how old were we then like i'm trying to like think of how old we actually were were we like even like 17 uh man yeah i think uh we had to be I, we had to be 17 or 18 then huh. i i had graduated a, or what are you a year behind me oh five yeah, i was a year behind you i think i had graduated and i was still you know trying to hang out with the high school kids so um i i think i had to be 18 and you were 17 somewhere close there you still had the explorer i was past the danger ranger days but anyways as you can see we have too many stories so we're gonna have to stay on track here we're gonna be on here all night no one's gonna watch a 24-hour story time or maybe they will they, they probably <laughs> will <You> guys are <laughs> just <laughs> like did we actually so had at this point i had i think had i already caught my first redfish was that when i had already caught one on top water in sarasota and it was i like fishing bridges all the time uh with, with you we were fishing mud flats in tampa and our the most exciting fishing day we had had up until the point when we said let's fish redfish tournaments the most exciting fishing we had was pulling up to the barrels at Anclote power plant oh yeah the ladyfish days <laughs> yeah, you had to cut a jig head out of your hand <laughs> that was i think the second time i went on the boat with you oh 
and I, it was winter time and I, I swam out and caught that snook that was stuck on the spoon in the middle of the, the middle of the outflow. Oh man. That was so hearing because I saved the snook's life. <laughs> I remember that. See, I, for some reason, and I, I think maybe alcohol might be involved. I think that I completely am like missing like large time frames of like things that happened like i still remember they happened but i am having trouble like meshing when they actually happened yeah so but i do remember going to oyster creek and you're right we still had the skiff then and we were taking the carolina skiff out and this is like every weekend fishing and Dude, I, I, remember, <laughs> yeah, I remember not catching a lot i remember us not catching anything and then what happened what happened what was the when did we actually go and buy why did we buy gulp shrimp okay I I, so we we went we didn't buy gulp shrimp we went to we were fishing anclote and we ran out of i think we ran out of doa shrimp and the trout were biting like crazy and that was all we could catch at that point was trout and ladyfish we were really good at catching trout and ladyfish. yeah so. really good <laughs> and uh so we went back to the boat ramp because we were completely out of bait. So we'd take three jig heads and a pack of baits with us every time. And that was our fishing. And you went to go get shrimp and there were no shrimp. And you came back with this pack of stuff that just smelled like hell. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we put it on. And I remember the first cast, I caught a trout. <laughs> we drove back to the store like 30 minutes later, you know, because we were out of bait already. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and that was it that's how we started fishing with berkeley gulp i don't even remember what color they were they were just whatever was I like it was a three inch new penny i feel like because I, I feel like we were like pretty stuck on new penny shrimp for like a long time yeah that's the only color we fished with but <laughs> i don't i don't think that's the first one i think it was a glow i feel like it was a glow jerk shad was the first thing we bought and then when we first started fishing for redfish, we were thinking of, you know, Louisiana, they were using all those tubes. Remember, I bought like 20 packs of those tube baits. But we oh, never yeah, little bass fishing lure looking things. And uh, so they were new penny colored. And then you found the new penny shrimp. And then that's where the new penny gulp started that we fished with for three years. <laughs> <laughs> Our whole tackle box. <laughs> whole tackle box was literally everything yeah <laughs> just that's right hundreds of dollars of gulps and jig heads and we couldn't catch them on that we just that's all we didn't catch anything that weekend no no yeah and when i remember catching the first red um down in inglewood it, was, it wasn't my first red fish but it was my first ever red fish on our official and we pulled up to the little islands i don't remember what those islands are called right by the trestle the, the railroad trestle in Placida. What are those? Uh, you're talking about the spot that we used to be our go-to tournament spot for a long time. Again, New <laughs> Penny and go-to tournament spot at that island where I caught my first ever artificial redfish. <laughs> very, Man. very much tunnel vision at that point. <laughs> yeah. You know that spot's never been like that ever again. I know you fished down there a lot, but you haven't fished down there recently. And I've never, ever caught redfish there like we used to catch there ever again. And I always, it's so nostalgic that spot is that like I have to, I literally cannot drive by the trestle. I'll be tarpon fishing and like I will go drop off my clients after for tarpon fishing at Boca Grande and go back and throw a gold spoon past that area. And I never catch anything. I see some snook, but it's not like, it's not like what it was. That was we must have just like got into it when it was like this special time of like just where redfish ate and they were everywhere because but for it's like definitely for, not what it is now for a year and a half or two years whatever it was we'd go to that spot and do that every time though <laughs> I, it wasn't like we just hit it at the right time it was just I, I don't know why the redfish kept going back and they probably left because we were there yeah I was just starting to think we're the people that outfished it <laughs> my face hurts I'm sick of this place <laughs> no no what? redfish back what? there eating this new penny shrimp <laughs> every time it gets thrown by the oyster <laughs> bar <laughs> um well you know i lived down there uh, i lived in inglewood for uh, oh, a little yeah. year. i totally forgot that see that's part of my uh, space i was missing yeah yeah i lived down there and um you're right it wasn't that way again but 
um i did go there and catch fish quite a few times actually it turned out to be a better snook spot than a redfish spot um i didn't go there without white bait um typically and and i never went there and didn't catch snook but uh but yeah i remember standing on the front of the th the the barge the 24 foot carolina skiff which you probably still have and trolling over uh the sandbar and us seeing a bunch of redfish we're like oh my gosh huge redfish everywhere they were all like 18 inches yeah <laughs> and i 36 inch redfish yeah. uh, mud, mud flops mud poofs yeah i made a terrible pitch out in front of them because at that point i didn't even know how to cast right and as soon as it hit the water a redfish ate it and we were freaking out <laughs> over this i think it was a 19 inch redfish <laughs> and uh I forget what happened. We turned the redfish loose, and you look back at me like, "Hey, there's a, there's an IFA tournament in, in three weeks. You want to fish it with me?" <laughs> oh, uh, what were we? Only, getting? only me. <laughs> and of course, I said, "Absolutely." <laughs> How much did it cost back then? Did we pay four hundred bucks to get in that dang thing? Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars, and. uh about seven thousand dollars in fuel and food and um, <laughs> eight, <laughs> six thousand dollars in new penny shrimp <laughs> yeah and, that was a proposition so i completely it, forgot it oh, so, side note i had just remembered the time that i almost cut my finger off on that boat that that dude lent us and we that we fished the tournament that was the second tournament. <laughs> oh, God. That was only the second tournament? Second tournament we fished. <laughs> I still get... I, my hand still goes numb when I fish. <laughs> Every time if I fish artificial because of that tournament. If we tell our stories, we're not going to make it through this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got to segue back into the other... The other... Uh, the tournament number one. Yeah, so we paid, we paid to get in. And at this point, I think I... Did I decide to buy that boat, a Kiwa Stealth, like right at the same time? Yeah, you said, hey, since we're fishing tournaments, we should probably get a boat that we can drive a long way with. And you bought you bought the Kiwa Stealth, which in another story we sunk a few times. <laughs> <laughs> but, that might, uh, that's the third or fourth tournament. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Did we fish the same spot? <laughs> But yeah, so this this tournament was out of Sarasota, and we the only redfish we'd caught on artificial uh, at that point was uh, in Inglewood. So we automatically said we're driving to Inglewood. <laughs> said forget Sarasota, and somehow when we were pre-fishing a month before, we knew to go on the same tides. So we pre-fished the same tide. I don't know how we knew. I don't know that. how we knew that either. <laughs> Because we didn't know anything. <laughs> but somehow we knew, because we read it on some article, that we had to fish the same tide to pre-fish. This I was the year after AC Lockyer won the Panama City Championship in Ducky Pond. Yeah. I think that's where we got it. It was the same tide. You know, all his the fishgasm <laughs> thing that he that he had is uh, his website. I, I think I read it on there. But anyhow... So we're fishing, uh, will that be the west bank of Lemon Bay? Just about across from Stump Pass Marina. Yeah. I tell spots now. <laughs> it, it helps the story. <laughs> and uh, pre-fish, and I, oh, now I remember, we only like to fish bushes in because that's, that's where I caught the only stud redfish we'd ever caught. Yeah, oh, water, water. Watermelon neon. That's what we bought after that. It was watermelon neon and new penny oh, yeah. shrimp. Watermelon neon jerk sheds. Ugly color. Why in the world did fish even eat them? But that's all we bought was that new penny shrimp. We had to have spent ten thousand dollars on watermelon neon. Colors. We are not exaggerating. I mean, that's that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I pitched underneath this uh, this mangrove limb. And hooked. You thought I hooked a tree. Mm. Hooked I think tree. I did tell you it was a tree. That's a tree <laughs> with choice words. 
<laughs> and uh, I remember reeling out this stud redfish and uh, and us saying, we're going to win. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, it was like 26 and 7 8 inch redfish. Perfect. And we said, we're going to win. And we were a month away from the one stud redfish. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember uh, that. But there yeah. was a lot of redfish there. Like, Oh, yeah. That, that was a fishy area. For a long time. It was, it was. that way. And, uh, yeah, so we drove all the way. We left in the morning with everybody else and drove all the way down to Lemon Bay. And I remember thinking 30 miles was so far at that point, or 35 miles, like, oh, my God, we're going to die, which was nothing uh, after we ran our Louisiana tournament that year. Um, yeah. But we, <laughs> we got down there, and it was our only spot. The tide was awful during the tournament. We didn't catch any fish for four and a half hours. Didn't see a fish. <laughs> For four and a half hours. Wait, this is the same tournament, by the way, right? With that, the boat ramp somehow had a kingfish tournament out of at the same uh, day. Boat fell off the trailer. Wasn't that the same one where it was like off the trailer at the ramp? Yeah, right. When we pulled up to the ramp, there's a Ranger Bay boat that was sitting on the concrete. Yeah. And there was a kingfish tournament going on. Remember? Oh yeah, there was nowhere to even. There, yeah, there was a. There's like. 300 boat spots at this boat ramp. It's the largest ramp in Sarasota County, guys. And it literally was slam packed with 100 plus uh, bay boats. And then like another 100, just like 40 foot, like the largest king fishing boats you could ever imagine into this and, little marina basin. And this is our very first <laughs> ever tournament experience. A 17 right. and 18. Might have turned 18 by that point. Ever. I don't know. You, you had, we we're, I think we might've been 18 and 19 at that point. Yeah. But anyway, first ever experience. We didn't fish a club tournament or anything like that. We're like, let's go. And we did not know what we were getting into. And this little bitty 17 and a half foot Key West stealth with all those boats around us. We were, I think we played it off well to each other. <laughs> we both yeah, I'm sure everybody out. else knew that we was our first time boating. <laughs> yeah, look at these guys tying their baits up. They just cut their line and tied their bait on again. <laughs> well, I remember it was it was pretty windy that day, right? It was like exceptionally windy. Remember the drift sock? We didn't have <laughs> we didn't have a power pole. We used the drift sock to drift down that bank. <laughs> well, right, so let's so we get out of the mayhem. We get checked in, and we're leaving to go. And we know we're running to Inglewood. Yeah. And I think we knew we had enough fuel to make it there. But we didn't know how to, how, that we'd have enough to make it there and back because we'd never made that long of a run in any boat. Yeah. Uh, so I think, did we, I remember us just me being very like scared. I don't know if I ever shared with you. I was pretty nervous just because it was like, for me, it was like such a big deal. Like, I don't know why. Like, I just, I always said like I didn't take it seriously, but it was always for me like, I was super competitive and I just, I never showed it. I don't think like how competitive that I actually was oh, and I so me not knowing if, if I'm going to get there, if the boat's going to make it, like I just bought this boat and now we're fishing a tournament in it and it's windy as crap. I don't even know how to drive a boat in a chop. We didn't have a GPS <laughs> before we won the GPS that we put on the boat. Oh, that we did win it. Didn't we? So we had no GPS at that point. It was just the boat, the motor, and us. <laughs> and a live well that worked great. <laughs> did we have a trolling motor on my stealth? Did I? Yeah, we did have a trolling motor. We did That's have right. A trolling motor. <laughs> yeah. so, All right. So we made it. I remember us making the we, – we took the intercoastal there, I think, correct? Because uh, it no, was so choppy. No, we ran out – then we run yeah we ran outside and it wasn't it wasn't that bad going down it wasn't oh, bad. and then when we, we got, got the spot. down there yeah when we got down there it was blowing we're like oh crap <laughs> we're not gonna make it back <laughs> it was a southwest wind right and we had to run back to the beach to southwest because we didn't leave enough time because yep. you, you were saying 
we were fishing, we were fishing and our fish didn't, sh- I remember like freaking out because our fish didn't show up and it was our only, it's like, why did we only have one spot fishing a tournament? Because we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> we had no clue. So we, we're, we're, we couldn't even get on the flat when we got, <laughs> I mean, that's how low it was. And we're like, oh my God, there's no, we can't even get up there where we there's fished no the old there. And we, we could only fish bushes. That's the only thing we knew how to do was fish bushes. <laughs> Skip under like we're skipping underneath docks fishing for bass. That's the only way we knew how to fish. Like, and what did we do? Because I remember like freaking out and just thinking to myself, like, we spent all this money and I bought a boat. We and yelled like, at each other for a long time. Oh I mean, yeah. We, we definitely yelled at each other for a long time. <laughs> when the water came up and the drift sock lifted up off the grass that it was just laying on and we actually started to move and get up to the the bushes and fish and when it started coming in it came in fast man and i don't know why and i don't know where the fish were now i i feel like i know where they were coming from they were they were coming in from that that north end around that point you know where where it kind of dropped off the the edge of the sandbar but Back then, I had no clue. They're just like, oh, my God, the fish materialized underneath the mangroves. <laughs> but uh, there was a school of hundreds of redfish that just showed up at the edge of the mangroves. And we put on a whack fest. Um, I remember you losing. Yes, Jason Dozier loses fish sometimes, or at least he used to. I you still lost, a lot. Like, I lose six, a lot of fish still. You lost six fish on one cast because we were using, well, you were using these little tiny wire hooks that you'd set the hook and the hook would just go, (laughs) and wouldn't go in the fish's face. (laughs) But we eventually got, I think we were catching mostly like four pounders or something like that. And this was what? It all happened in about 30 or 40 minutes because we didn't catch a fish or see a fish for the first four and a half or five hours of fishing. And I pitched again one last, I pitched way underneath the mangrove, should have gotten stuck. No reason I should have even been able to pull my jig out, much Uh less the fish that I hooked. And I remember hooking this giant, perfect redfish. We didn't know it was perfect. And I swear you gave me a back rub the whole time I was reeling that fish. (laughs) I'll kill you. Get him in, Kelly. Come on, you got this, man. Get him. <laughs> and netted the fish, and we're hooping and hollering before we even knew if it was small enough. <laughs> Which is often <laughs> what we did. I still do it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so we didn't have a proper measuring stick. We had one of those fold up FWC sticks, remember? <laughs> we didn't even have a check it stick. <laughs> Of a check a stick. So we're laying it there. Got the Walmart free sticker. It keeps moving back and forth. So I'm trying to hold its head and you're trying to hold the ruler and you're pinching his tail. Oh hold on, let me grab let me grab my uh let me grab my laptop cord. I thought it was my battery would last, but I guess <laughs> it's not. Okay. Give me a second here. Yeah, I had to plug in my phone too. Let me turn my scenic lighting on. set the mood right <laughs> all right so i remember i distinctly remember like you said like we had the the old fold out stick i'm not i'm not even sure that thing was even trustworthy to be used for no. regulations wise if a game warden came up because they probably have a check it stick <laughs> yeah, probably but 
I know we're both trying to hold this fish that's slipping all over your uh, this the cushion on top of was that where the live was? something was in there but it was just slipping all over the top of this thing and finally we're just like yep he's perfect he's good let's <laughs> put him in the line we're tired of fighting him and uh i don't think we had enough time to catch another fish i think that was the last fish we caught and uh weren't sure he was gonna measure scared saw the hooters boat go by and that made us more scared because <laughs> they had this awesome boat and we're in a you know oh, not chris whitman. awesome boat yeah chris whitman and I, I forget who was fishing with them they blow by and uh we're thinking yep if they're just now leaving and they've got that boat we <laughs> better go <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> they could be in our coastal <laughs> did we have we had two fish in the boat yeah we caught we caught two fish we we got okay we'll get to that part but yeah we did good <laughs> yeah yeah i remember so that's so why i remember that we had two fish and i remember we did pretty well in the event but i i i, I as i recall like you said the wind started picking up so we're it's time to go we have been using so i want to I'll take it back just for a second because i think this makes the story better is we in fact we're using the wind to our advantage at this point and didn't even know why we were catching these fish. We were literally drifting back and forth with a drift sock up and down these mangroves silently and very so slowly. We were drifting silently, but when we got to the end of the mangrove and we powered back. <laughs> we cranked our motor up. <laughs> right back. Boom. <laughs> oh, God. Through the zips, uh, through the, through the drift sock back out. Um, <laughs> I don't, there's no reason we should have caught any of those fish, but we, <laughs> we kept catching them. <laughs> uh oh. All right. Sorry. My thing's making emojis. I don't know what I did. I was wondering, I was like, does that mean <laughs> I need to shut up more or? <laughs> All right. So, I, so we start heading back, right? And we, I really, we, I think we tried to make the decision if we have to take the beach, but we had spent so much time fishing that we had to take the beach. Like there was no other way. And it was blowing up like the windiest I've ever been. On probably, the beach. probably still <laughs> <laughs> top, top five for sure. Yeah. Windiest, especially because now I have a ginormous bay boat that can handle that crazy stuff. And that boat was not designed to do what we made it do. No, I mean, I can't believe we didn't die that day in our very <laughs> first. <laughs> so we were not making good time and we were not happy and we were soaking wet. Our frog togs did not hold up to the task. Mm. And then our, 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 our frog togs. <laughs> yeah, our, our, uh, our frog togs had more water in them than our boat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember we kept checking the fish and looking back at a couple times they were belly up because they were getting beat up so much. <laughs> we had to stop. <laughs> save so the them. <laughs> but we got all the way back. We could see the pass there under the bridge at Sarasota. Oh. And we were high five and yeah, we made it. And somehow i don't know if you went faster or what but we hit a rogue wave and speared it my glasses they were hanging down and they came up and hit me in the face so hard that i thought the trolling motor broke off and uh, hit me i i thought we got hit by something hard too yeah and that's just how hard water hits come to find out about 40 miles an hour well you were in so shock from it that you you turn the motor off you go it's bogging down. I'm like, turn it back on. And go. <laughs> this wave, everybody, filled up the whole bottom of my QS stealth. It's a self bailing hole, but we were at this point like level with the water line in the boat. Like the boat was more sunk than it was floating. Yeah, we were. But thankfully, it, <laughs> thankfully it cranked back up because we were in the worst possible spot to sink. Is outside of the pass on a windy day. Too and, far to swim back in. And uh, I remember we made it. I remember pulling back into the boat and I'm just going, holy shit. 
we made it. Like, yeah. not being surprised, just happy we made it. Like, we just made it back. Like, yeah. I wasn't sure we'd ever make a run like that ever again. And uh, there were 114 boats that tournament. I, I remember that because it was our first one. <laughs> 114 boats there's never been probably a showing like that since we fished them for the ifa yeah. that was definitely the peak of the ifa i feel like as far as turnout you know because the economy was so good and everything was really good shit 18 year olds are buying qs stuff the economy is pretty good <laughs> <laughs> yep and uh i remember i made you carry the small fish because i caught the big one i'm like nope i'm carrying them <laughs> and when we we measured yours and they just they took it out of the bag and then threw it in another bag. <laughs> <laughs> and then measured ours and we're looking at it like excited, please measure. And uh, they threw it in the bag and we high fived again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it made it. <laughs> and uh, seven. Well, you can probably go back and look at this too. I feel like my numbers are really good. Seven point zero three pounds. <laughs> Hold on, let me. Let's see if. We can go back to IF. I'm going to search on my Facebook right now. 10.14 pounds, I think, was our weight. And that one was 7.03. I remember the guy looking at me when he handed the, the little ticket they gave you at the end. He says, he says nice job, boys. Y'all are going to get a good check. And I remember <laughs> thinking, check? <laughs> I can't find anything on it now, but I'll look, I'll look it up later. Yeah. But yeah, I know that's what's crazy too. Is like, what did we end up placing? Cause I don't remember. It was 14th, 14th out of 114, which is actually pretty good. Yeah. I mean, considering everything, <laughs> <laughs> didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> Definitely didn't know what we were doing. And we almost died. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was that was really good, and uh, I I'm pretty sure uh, that was when Brandon Franklin and Wayne Gatlin were fishing together still, and they yeah. I remember they had like 11 pounds, and they were the power pole guys, and we we're like, <laughs> we only got a pound less than the power pole guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was the first day we met Mike Davis too, right? We met that him there. Yep, that's where we met yeah. Mike Davis. And then I think we met Richard Martinick and his son too that day. Yep, yep. But, uh, that was a that was the start of something that I had no idea what would actually become of me, especially just because I had no idea I'd become a guide ever in my life. If you asked me then, like if I'd ever become a fishing guide, no, thought for sure I'd still be doing the staffing industry thing or the yep. courier. Shoot, at this point, I wasn't even hunting then. You know, like I didn't even shot my deer, and you had shot a bunch of deer by then, so. Everything was uh, pretty new for me, but so I completely forgot like how many stories we actually have together that they all somehow almost involve death. Yep, every one of them. <laughs> it involved almost death. Trials and tribulations. We could probably do for your, your I don't know what you're calling this, a podcast or video cast, but we could do like a near death experiences with Kelly <laughs> Brooks section, just a, you know, a tab. <laughs> yeah so these things on youtube called story times and it's just where people tell like stories so i figured we uh a great place to start a story time for me and my youtube channel would be at the beginning yeah you know of then i had no idea that saltwater fishing would become such a big part of my life you know i fished a lot shoot you know we skip school every day to go bass fishing you know yeah we can uh, say <laughs> Your son's listening right now, taking knees back there, taking notes. I told him to go upstairs and close the door because I didn't know what we were going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably that's probably a good thing. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, I think we'll probably let me know how often you want to do this because uh, I'm trying to do like a fishing video, a how-to video, and then like a traveling fishing video. And then a story time. So I keep like a rotation. So it's just not like the same monotonous stuff coming up in my playlist every week. And uh, I want to do it weekly. So we have like 19 years of content. Yep. <laughs> It'll have to fit in between uh, between work, uh, hunting trips, and uh, 
Johnny and I's uh, podcast that we do on um, Into the Primitive. Um, yeah, we, where's that going to be at so everybody can find you? I'll try to put links up, guys, too, in the description for this. Gosh, I, I know it's – he just uh, he just sent all of it to me a little bit ago, but it, it's pretty much on every podcast platform. Yeah, um, I knew it's on Apple, Apple Podcasts. I saw that because I was reading – uh, what Johnny posted the other day. So any any platforms that are uh, going to have podcast guys, you can find it. What's the name? It's Into the Primitive. Um, and it's just, talk about. it's just us talking about uh, you know hunting, fishing, uh, and and trying to get more into the primitive type lifestyle, not uh, not city living, if you will. I mean, we're we're talking hunting, fishing, fixing old RVs, um, which you and I have stories with that too. <laughs> um, but just uh, just country living, primitive living. It sounds like something I would definitely listen to. Uh, well, he we'll have to play. To, uh, it's uh, jjtouchton.com, uh, jjtouchton.com. Cool. Well, I appreciate it, man. We'll definitely uh, have to tell some more stories soon. And then uh, whenever you guys need a charter captain on there, it's pretty much all I've become good at. I'm still really <laughs> not good at hunting, but of course, if you need old Thunderfoot to come on and tell a couple hunting stories, yeah, I'll, yep. uh, I'll make sure to show up. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that for sure. Definitely, we will. All right, man. Have a good night. All right, buddy. See you. See you, dude.